Okay, now what we're looking at is a more graphical explanation of the differences between a small, medium, and a large eCauseway business. So you start all of these again by joining as an independent business owner or what we um, refer to as an IBO, short or abbreviated acronym for independent business owner. IBO, so you see that over here where I've got IBO 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's representing the people that you would introduce the business to. Um, and, you know, so the first one would be this guy, the second one would be this lady, and this one would be this, you know, person and that person, etc. Whatever they do below them to you counts as just a single volume or number right there. So it doesn't really matter what their structure is below them if they go small, medium, or large, or if their people, or their people's people, or their people's 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 people go with a large and everyone else in between them is small, it makes zero difference to you whichever of these business models you go with. Because anyone that's direct to you when the computer looks at the model to pay you just gets totaled up into one number. So. You know, it doesn't matter if their business looks like this, this, or this. It doesn't matter if it's small or big. It all looks like one number to you. So if this is you, anybody below C, like I1, this entire branch to whatever it leads to unknown counts as one number when it's calculating C's volume. When the computer's calculating A's volume, all it sees is C and D. It doesn't even see these branches here. So <clears throat> you need to um, just be aware of that. So the trick to making a lot of money in this business really is this. This is the number one secret. You are allowed to sponsor and recruit an unlimited number of branches from any of these positions. You or if you have the medium model, you can recruit as many as you want under A, as many as you want under B. You can even recruit more under U. But remember, the whole advantage of the medium is that you get an extra check. So if you want that extra check, you want to put all of your new IBOs below A and B. And in the large model, remember, you want to get the three extra checks. And where are those extra checks at? Well, the first one's right here. You get paid on A and B as their total volume, regardless of what's below them. And then you get paid on each of your individual bottom positions, you know, C, D, E, and F, for each of the branch sets that they have below them. And with that, you get paid an extra check on A because it looks at C and it looks at D and it again just sums all of the volume of whatever's below it and counts it as one number when it's calculating A's check and B's check. So your three extra checks in this model under the large are the U and the A and the B. The extra check in the medium is the U and then you put your actual people under the A and the B in the medium model and you put your actual you know, business people under the C, D, E, and the F in the large model. Now you'll notice too that on all of these, the large, the medium, and the small, we've got VIPs hanging off of the U. And what is a VIP? A VIP shopper is a person that joins eCauseway for the purpose of saving money on the sale items, special sets, and other deals that we might have in the store that are for members only. They also get the ability to earn extra cash, well not really cash, but credits in the store that they can spend just like cash. And they do that by telling their friends. So for example, <clears throat> this is going to get really shaky because I didn't intend to draw while I was doing the video, but you could do another VIP up here. And this one gets a VIP as an example. So VIPs can sponsor VIPs. You get to count all of these VIPs volume in your overall profit calculations, but put the lid on the pen, you only get the direct profit one level down. So whatever VIPs are hanging right here, 
these first two here, you're going to get direct profit whenever they make purchases. And direct profit is up to 15% of the retail price. All of the other types of commission, <coughs> which would include personal branch profit, branch override profit, and then if qualified properly, as I teach you to do, you would get unlimited numbers of branch performance incentive payments and extra incentive payments. So two additional types of profit that you must qualify to earn. They come by default with the medium or the large business. So if you earn the three centers or the seven centers, then you're already automatically qualified for unlimited branch performance incentive and unlimited extra incentive. But if you're doing the small business, remember you must do 100 EV in the first 30 days and then at least 400 additional EV or a total of 500 EV within 60 days of starting your business in order to achieve BPI and EI, branch performance incentive and extra incentive on a number of unlimited or an, un, an infinite number of branches. So you get this regardless for your $60 for your first three types of profit. So you're not limited on the number of branches that you can create. Even if you have the smallest of the small businesses, you can have an unlimited number of branches. But if you want paid all three types of branch related profit on an unlimited number of branches, then you must do the qualification um, to earn that and you can do that either automatically by getting the A and the B that which again this is you do 500 EV in the first 30 days of your business and you can sell that to VIP shoppers or you can buy that through your VIP shopper and in the large business you also get the unlimited payout for all three types of profit branch related profit by default when you qualify your business for the seven income centers, the A, B, C, D, E, and F. When you do that, or to do that, you must do 1,000 EV in special sets only within the first 30 days of your business. So if you achieve that goal, then you've also automatically qualified to earn on any position in your network from all three types of profit on an unlimited number of branches. So. It's basically automatic with these two. If you're building the small business or you're working on a, from a small budget and you're trying to you know, do this as efficiently as possible to start earning money, you want to, again, be sure you do 100 EV in special sets in the first 30 days. And you can take advantage of what they call the special discount special set that basically pays you back the $60 in savings for what you paid for your business position. So I'd strongly suggest you look at those. You're not required to buy one, but you're only allowed to buy one in your first 30 days of business and you're only allowed a single purchase because it is such a deep discount. The other special sets are available all the time. And again, just to recap, you do always have to do all of the qualifications to achieve any of these different business um, payment levels through special sets. And what is a special set? It's basically a group of products the company has put together that they feel is going to be attractive to the market. And they've dropped the price in many cases on the smaller special sets, like the 50 and the 100 EV sets and also like on the water system that's a 200 EV set they've dropped the prices or you can get a substantial retail price discount on those but more importantly what makes the special set special is the fact that the EV the profit that they count when they're you know paying you for this they look at each branch and see what is the total EV for this branch that EV for special sets is inflated. It's increased drastically over what it would be if you bought the item separately. It's as much as, it's more than double in some cases. Like on the 500 EV sets, if you bought those normally, the, all the items in there, you would only be getting about 230 EV. But when you buy it as a special set, you get 500 EV points. And so that's, for example, an easy way to basically instantly qualify your business for this medium level. Some people that have the cash come in and they buy two of those 500 EV on the first day they sign up and they immediately qualify for the large business um, and all the full payouts. 
So those are options if you have the money to do the medium and the large. You can come in, create your VIP shopper, and I like to call the one that you control and you buy under your profit shopper because you want to make profit off of your own purchases when you're buying your stuff, both your qualification sets as well as your monthly qualifications. You want to earn profit from your own spending. I assume you do anyway. I would, and I do. So you always want to buy through the shopper and then you're going to earn the direct profit. If you buy the stuff yourself, whoever sponsored you into the business, if you're watching this, hopefully me, will earn the direct profit. And while I'd like to have as much profit as I can get, I want you to be successful in the business and to make as much profit as you can so that you stay in here for the long haul and we can all uh, you know, meet up somewhere on a little island and enjoy our drinks later when we retire. But uh, anyway, that's basically it in a nutshell for what the differences in the structural appearance of the small, medium, and the large business look like. <clears throat> so, now the next thing that we need to discuss is what do you do when you're sponsoring new people where do you put them? And we sort of touched on this, but for the most part, well, obviously in this one it's easy. You sign everybody up under you because you only have you to worry about. Okay, we get over here, now it's a little bit more complex. Okay, we got two different types of people we're signing up, VIPs and we got IBOs. Now, you can see in my picture here, I put the IBOs at the bottom the way that I have this drawn. You could draw it the other way and call it the top, but I've placed them at the bottom the reason I've done that is I'm going to get paid on these two people under A. It's going to calculate the total volume of everything this guy has, everything this person has, and pay me on A. And then it's going to come over here and it's going to do the same thing on B. And then it's going to look at me and say, okay, what's the total, which is this and this, for A, and what's the total, which is this and this, for B, and it's going to pay me accordingly on my main profit center. So in this model you can see that it does make a little bit of difference where you put people. In other words, if I put an IBO up here under you or my main profit center, um, I'm not going to get counted for that volume on one of my lower profit centers. So I'm not going to get paid an extra time. I'll get paid for their volume up here accordingly but I won't receive two checks for the same effort. So if you want to see, receive the amplification effort of the medium or the large, then you must place your IBOs at the bottom of your structure. So here I've abbreviated IBO to just I, and I've placed on there how I would probably sponsor. Now it may change based on your specific circumstances, but if you have a seven, a big business, you qualified by doing your 1,000 EV in the first 30 days, you would put your first person, for example, under C, and your second person under C. When this is all you have and this doesn't exist, these people aren't signed up yet, you could get away with doing the monthly qualification the same way as this one, with just 15 EV if you only had these two people, because it won't pay you any differently if you didn't have all of these people there because D wouldn't have any volume, E wouldn't have any volume, and F wouldn't have any volume if these people didn't exist. So that's why you always want to sponsor at the bottom and you want to sponsor at least two per node in order to start getting the full payment. Okay, so basically we want to, you know, if we go for this large structure, we qualify our thousand EV in special sets either by selling it or purchasing it ourselves in the first 30 days of our business after we start with just this, we will earn these. Then we're out there beating the street, talking to our friends, family, people we meet, etc. and we start signing people up that want to do the same thing that we're doing. And they can pick, you know, this, this, or this. It makes no difference to us. We want to sign them up and we want to put them where if we've got these seven positions. I would suggest starting with C. Put your first one under C. Put your second one under C. Then put your third one over here under F and your fourth one under F. What you're doing is basically if you pretended that all of this was gone is you're 
trying to kind of balance across you. You want to stay centered, so to speak. And this is not a binary profit plan, so balance is semi-irrelevant, but it will make a difference in your check. In an ideal world, if you had all eight of these IBOs recruited and they all had an exactly even amount of EV that they were purchasing or selling within a single month or every month, that would pay you the maximum income that you could possibly earn from the eCausway model. Now obviously, that's never going to happen. That's just unrealistic. People don't behave the way we want them to or tell them to, etc. typically. So, you know, it's possible that this guy might do really well and this guy doesn't do so well. And this guy does really good and this lady does really well. And these two people are really bad and these two people are really good or whatever. I mean, who knows how all these people are going to shake out. But conceptually, what you want to ultimately try to do is maintain some degree of balance to where the total volume of A is close to the total volume of B. And similarly, the total volume of C is close to the total volume of D. And the total volume of E is close to the total volume of B. So that when the computer's looking at those two numbers to calculate your check, you will receive the most amount of money that you possibly can. Now, why is two important? Well, because the two biggest types of payment that you're going to receive when this grows into a huge network of thousands of people are called branch performance incentive and extra incentive. And the way that those work is if you just have two branches, they take out one branch and call that your qualifying branch. So in other words, when, that, when I'm getting paid, let's look at this for a minute. When I'm getting paid on this structure and it's calculating my check for you or my main center, the total volume of A versus the total volume of B, whichever of those is bigger, will be what they call my qualifying branch for my branch performance incentive and my extra incentive. And I will not be paid on that one. I will be paid all the bonuses on the smaller, the second one. So that's why we want to maintain whatever level of balance and equality that we can so that we're maximizing our check. So in other words, to say it another way, if A, the total volume was, you know, 100 million EV and B was only 500 EV, what am I going to earn on? I'm only going to earn on 500 EV. You know, now over here, I might still be getting paid a lot of money if, say, this A was split and this was, what did I say, 100 million EV? If this was 50 million EV and this was 50 million EV, I'd be getting a big, big, big check here on A just off of one branch because the commissions pay in an unlimited fashion. You know, that's a very unrealistic example, but the point is if, if in any level, like say, let's look at the simplest one, if it's just a single profit center, if one of these branches is huge, you know, millions of EV and it just goes on forever, and the rest are tiny, or you don't have more than one, you're not going to earn hardly any money in this company. Because most of the commissions pay you on a branch by branch basis. Two of the commissions take out what they call a qualifying branch. Again, that's BPI and EI. So in this scenario, say we just really had four branches, pretend number one is the biggest, I'm going to get paid on two, three, and four. If I only had two branches and one is the biggest, I'm only going to get paid on two for those two types of commission or profit. So do you want paid on half of your volume or do you want paid on three quarters of your volume for the BPI and the EI commissions? This is how I like to explain to people. And if you have, you know, remember you can go unlimited. So if you have ten branches, you're going to be getting paid on nine tenths of your branches, the BPI and the EI bonuses. If you have 32 branches, you're going to get, be getting paid 31 30 seconds of your total volume on your BPI and your EI bonuses. So this is why it pays very well to go wide in this business and try to get 
you know, at least four branches per profit center to where you're getting 75% of the, the basic total volume of those two key bonuses, the BPI and EI. Same thing's true here. So this is a good way to kind of decide how big of a business do I want, small, medium, or large, and how big of an income do I want. In this model, again, as I just said, you would want a minimum of four IBOs, in my opinion, if you're going to do a small business. That's a, it should be a serious goal to get four key people, and it doesn't have to be the person directly below you. It might be somebody below them somewhere that's really building, but you need four lines that are growing nice and building below you to get paid nicely there. And if you have more than four, you're going to get paid much, much better. Okay, in the medium-sized business, because we have this A-B structure, when we're just paying A, again, I'm down to half of my income. So really, in this structure, you need a minimum to get paid well of eight branches in a medium-sized business. So if you think you can recruit, find, know, whatever, eight IBOs over the next year or two, three, then the medium-sized business might be for you. Now here it's the same deal. If I've only got the two per bottom center, I'm only getting half of my worth or my, my two bonuses there on the um, C level when I'm getting paid on C. So I want to have at least four on each C, D, E, and F, which four times four would be 16 branches. So if you're going to do a large business, your goal to get paid maximally or nicely, very nicely, would be to do a minimum of 16 good growing branches below your structure of seven profit centers. So that's kind of uh, a quick and dirty on the placement. One other quick note here before we cut this off. Back on the VIPs, and especially on like the large model and the medium model, again, this one you only got one spot to put them. The question here is, okay, where do I put my VIPs in this structure? Well, in your first probably six months, maybe even a year of recruiting, I would recommend just put them all attached to you. Because the reason is, as these grow under A and B, the way that you get paid on this volume, besides the direct profit from the first level that you get, you don't get direct profit from this one or this one you know, this guy gets this guy's direct profit and this guy gets this guy's direct profit. So you want to earn the most you can off of all of these shoppers here, right? So the, the way that you receive your personal branch profit, it looks at your entire business. Even if you got one huge elephant leg, that's going to help you for this calculation because whatever your entire volume is at the U level or whatever level the VIP is attached to is going to determine the basically like the retail profit they call it the personal branch profit so this is we're just looking at you when we do that so it's calculating the total volume of my entire business and then setting my percentage I receive on the EV of all of my shoppers and their shoppers and their shoppers and their shoppers etc etc on to infinity for the shopper network as well um, anyway, so what you, you know, the question is, well, why do you always put them on the top? Well, a couple reasons. Well, in the old days, we used to have to put them under the A and under the B, and we had to explicitly qualify each position. But with the advancement of software changes and computer technology, we no longer have to do that. V EV and volume from any VIPs anywhere in any of your centers in either of these models will count, they'll, they'll move it around automatically to qualify your different business centers so that you will get paid fully on all of your volume below you. So you can put them all right to your main center and as long as you have in this model 45 EV per month and in this model 105 EV per month you will be fully paid on all of your volume and the computer will move like say this guy did 100 EV and this guy did 5 EV the, the computer would move 15 to here, 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 15 to here and it would do that all automatically now so that seems pretty straightforward we just always put our VIPs on top attached to our main now there are a few times where that would be different in these two situations right here. Say for example A 
was a huge, huge leg, you know, 50,000 EV, and B was only 1,500 EV, and then I signed up a new guy under B, and he was at, you know, he got me up to 1,800 EV. So if I would just buy another 200 EV under the B position, that would cause me to get a bigger check on my BPI and my EI because it would move me up a bracket in the payment scale because most of the, the commission percentages or the payment amounts are set on a bracketed basis. So if for a small amount of dollars or EV really you want to bump up your check to the next level, it may behoove you in the future to put a shopper under A and a shopper under B that you could make an explicit purchase under to cause your check to increase at the end of the month. Same thing's true in the seven center model. You probably ultimately do want to have a shopper under C, D, E, and F that you could use to make a purchase in a case where you notice that it's going to drastically influence your check by, you know, basically the cost of the purchase you would obviously want to do that so but other than that you know blatant manipulation of your your network in order to squeeze more money out of eCauseway other than that the best way to squeeze the most money out of eCauseway is to put your VIP shoppers on top just to explain that once more if I put them up here say each of these eight people did 1,000 EV for simple math. That means C has 2,000, D has 2,000, E has 2,000, and F has 2,000. A has 4,000, B has 4,000. My main has 8,000. Now again, these are bracketed percentages. So as my overall business volume goes up for whatever position the computer's calculating for, the percentage of profit I earn off of the EV from these VIPs goes up. So by putting the VIPs at the top of my business center or my you know seven profit centers, I'm always going to get the maximum branch performance incentive off of the you know whatever the VIPs purchase. So in this example I just gave you, if I put this VIP down here under C, I'm only going to earn whatever percentage I'm qualified for with 2,000 EV. Whereas up here, I'm going to get to count those shoppers as 8,000 EV. So in general, you want to put IBOs on the bottom, VIPs on top, and that rule will work for 99, 98% of the cases. There's a few times where you want to blatantly manipulate the system to squeeze more money out of eCauseway. In those cases, you may want to put some shoppers down under A or B or C, D, E, and F you know, depending on if you have the medium or the large business model. Thanks, I hope that all made sense to you.